Hey YouTube, this is Jericho Majors, once again coming back to do a, another kind of discussion about the 50th anniversary. Uh, I made a video of this a while back in my class, uh, and I just felt, I felt that I should elaborate some, because there are some things that I didn't talk about that I didn't know about yet, and uh, some... There are some things, uh, like the screwdriver incident and the TARDIS incident, that I didn't really talk about, um, and to, to elaborate, I'm making this video really quickly about the, uh, about the, uh, David Tennant's screwdriver that he's going to be using and his TARDIS that he's going to be using. Um, now, first off, there have been, you know, pictures taken, stills, of the, the 50th, where David Tennant has a screwdriver and him and Matt Smith are comparing, and... People, I something I actually noticed before I even heard about all this. <clears throat> I was watching that trailer about a week ago, and I saw the screwdriver. And in my head, I thought that looks a little yellow. It's kind of weird. But in my head, it also, I was just like, well, sometimes natural lighting can make the screwdriver look yellow just because of what light is bouncing off of it. Because that's what happens a lot. Uh, people misconstruing the season three through four prop as being uh, yellow, cream like uh, the Aztec, um, which was the season one and two. Didn't know. So. Here's a still shot, uh, I can't print these off because I don't have printer ink, sorry, so I'll down the brightness a little bit, and you can kind of see, that's the MFX collectible right there in the middle of the picture, and then those two pictures from the 50th. So, what that means is that, like, what we've gathered from that is that BBC didn't have enough time to make a... a I guess a screen accurate uh, prop and didn't have time to acquire some screen accurate props made by other people. They actually just... Well, I mean, they they, they, they went after something I think that was easier. Uh, I think, in my mind, that MFX had something to do with this and somehow, like, the long way kind of thing. But they acquired four MFX uh, replicas to use in the 50th. And if you didn't know, uh, the MFX collectible was actually extremely inaccurate in terms of like proportions and um, coloring on the uh, crackle coat, which wasn't really a crackle coat. The wires were a little weird, uh, and the head was really narrow. The struts weren't really um, prominent. They didn't come out a lot. Uh, just different things like that. They kind of keep it from being screen accurate. And I have some references here. Uh, these were taken at Comic Con. Um, I think last year, no, it was this year, or whenever they had a Comic Con, and uh, they had, or someone went to the one company booth with uh, the MFX replica uh, side by side. I'm just going to show you what those two look like. Um, one of the things I, I didn't like about the one company is how uh, far up the activating switch was whenever it's a little farther back, but the MFX goes way far back. It's supposed to hit like the top, at least. It's it's about to hit the bottom of the second ridge right there. The one company comes up to the first, and the MFX goes behind the second. So they're both kind of out of whack there. But you can kind of see the different differences in paint. How the MFX is echo coat kind of attempt, but it looks like tears, and it's kind of this yellowish uh, smoker's teeth color. And then the one company there, I understand that uh, the one company there is actually painted by Nick Rubato. It's the prototype one company, Sonic. But uh, that's Nick Rubato. That was like the prop maker at the time. And if he knows how to do that accurately, then those paint jobs should um, show you about how accurate the paint job would be. Now the proportions on the one company are different uh, slightly from the screen used one. Uh, but I'll show you what the backs of them look like, or what the, the heads of them look like, the differences in heads. You can very, very much see it there. Uh, what I'm talking about whenever they are different proportions. The one company is very narrow and kind of pointed, and the MFX is kind of squashed. Uh, the one thing I do like about the MFX versus the one company or CT, I'm going to use the word CT, I don't want to anger anyone because I know that uh, it can cause controversy, so I'm not going to dwell on that. But the one company has a kind of clear see-through bulb. Uh, sorry. It's kind of clear. Uh, if there's enough light in the room, you can obviously see through it. 
right there. It's very plasticky looking, and I don't mind that, uh, as it's the best replica I've ever owned. But the Solicitor Toy Store is very kind of a thick version of that, and it's kind of angled differently in the screwdriver. It kind of goes up and over. This one's like straight over, and I love the way it looks at a distance. Like that looks really good from a distance, but whenever you get up close and you start paying attention to it, it looks kind of toy. Let's see from a distance, it looks good. And the MFX bulb actually has this kind of candy coating on it. It's really strange. Uh, I'll try to get a good picture of that if I can. And I've got this really matte, almost glazed over texture on the bulb, and I don't know how they. Uh, I don't know how we got to do that, but I'm gonna try to get a picture. And uh, you just have to trust me. Look up a picture of the MFX on Google Images, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, BBC kind of just borrowed four of those from the MFX replicas guys. Uh, I don't know how much money they caught. They they use they I don't know how much money they used doing it, but. I mean, I, I, it, was, it seems kind of like a lazy uh, decision in terms of like making decisions for the 50th anniversary. Uh, now, also, there was some uh, news on the TARDIS that they're going to be using for David Tennant uh, in the 50th, and it's actually. It's actually uh, the the museum piece in the Cardiff uh, exhibit. I don't know if it's in Cardiff. It's in. One of those London, land and land countries, uh, these little countries of buildings that they have called uh, uh, cities. And uh, interestingly enough, it's lit very much like it was at the exhibit. I've seen pictures of people at the exhibit. I've seen some amateur pictures with just a cell phone. I've seen some professional pictures with uh, some HD cameras. And it's lit very much like it is in the museum. They didn't really change out the lighting too much. Um, now, Hey, I just found something out. Uh, a sneaking suspicion that I had before about the the war doctor, the time war doctor. I've called him. I've been calling him the time war doctor. Apparently, he's dubbed the war doctor. I had some suspicions about a screwdriver because it had a red magnet on the back of it, and I was like, it looks like the the um, the ring at the top of the fourth. Well, that's there at the bottom, and then apparently, let me pull this picture up. This is, wow. I just saw this. Apparently, on his screwdriver, the head is broken off. And I had a suspicion that they were going to bridge the two uh, screwdriver uh, eras, like with, uh, you know, holding it like this and the collar, and then with the new ones that you hold like this. And that looks like he's doing that. It looks like they're doing that. That was... I guess I saw that one coming. Uh, yeah. That's kind of cool. People are people are suspecting... I've actually heard them talk about this. I didn't know what they were talking about. I had People were talking about the fourth Doctor Screwdriver with the head broken off of it. Uh, like the actual toy. I don't mean like the... Uh, just... Just the screwdriver itself. I mean like the actual toy, which is kind of lazy. But, you know... They're lazy for a lot of stuff. But anyways, Dr. Hugh Museum, um, that is where they are filming uh, the 10th Doctor's TARDIS. I, I believe that they took apart the set to put it there, um, and so it is, there are parts of the original set in that set, but it was made to be looked at from a, like, from a guardrail, not to be touched. It was a museum piece, um, and that's really discouraging, but I'm... I'm happy with seeing David Tennant and Matt Smith's TARDIS a little bit. Uh, I will probably ejaculate if there is a scene where Matt Smith is locked up or away or trapped or some something, and David Tennant starts to operate Matt Smith's TARDIS. If he's like, blah, 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 and he's like pulling stuff and like clicking stuff in, if he starts doing that, I'm probably gonna have a seizure in front of my own father, uh, which would be very embarrassing. But it's probably just what would happen. Uh, she. I know. Oh.
Where the fuck out pizza at? I don't know, man! We ordered pizza like, uh, what, how long ago? An hour ago? An hour ago. And we know it's it's shipping to us because we got the whole receipt and everything. Ooh, perfect. The only way I actually started to suspect something was wrong, a lot of this stuff I kind of caught with my eye and I thought about, but I just kind of let it go because I was honestly too excited the first time I saw this trailer. I was like, oh my god, I'm rubber together and he's in his TARDIS, and then he quoted the second doctor. He was like, oh, you're redecorated. I don't like it. He kind of said it differently, because the second doctor was like, I see you've done the TARDIS up a bit. I don't like it. It's, it was a good little, ah, but I wasn't really paying attention that much. Uh, here it is, okay. The, t the TARDIS exhibit at the, uh, the TARDIS exhibit is actually really nice. Uh, it has the full, like, 360 degrees of the TARDIS, like, floor, but then it only has the wall behind it. I'll show you here. Uh, if you can see that. Let me turn down the brightness. You, when you walk up to it... You can hold that for me. Right there. When you walk up to it, there's an area right here. To walk around, there's an area around here. So you get to walk around it and then through into a hallway that goes that way. But they have only one wall, about, I would say, a fourth of the wall up of the original set, and it only goes up to about here. The original set went up to about here, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I meant like. No. Now, as you can see, the TARDIS has this huge like floodlight over it. So what they did was to light it for the 50th anniversary, they turned that floodlight off, those floodlights. They basically just turned those floodlights off. And for some reason, the LEDs under the uh, hood of the TARDIS are here's a better picture. Uh, the LEDs are blue like more blue than they were blue green. And that kind of changes the interior a little bit. Now, the interior originally was kind of a blue-green. Uh, this is kind of just straight-up blue, as you can see. Um, if you can see, okay, right here. I know that looks green, but I'm told it's green. It's kind of changing the color a little bit. It's uh, very much blue. It's kind of a light blue, but it's very obviously blue and not blue-green. And uh, you can see on the console itself, a lot of the pieces are static and don't move. So that's gonna mean he's not gonna be in his TARDIS a lot. So that's why I suspect. That. She. Yeah, no. No. That's me. Now, these two things—they uh, are gripes of mine. That's just my personal thing. I know a lot of people won't care, and I, under I understand that. I appreciate that. I know that it's gonna still create the illusion for some people. I'm not gonna let it draw back the 50th anniversary if it's good. I'm gonna watch the 50th anniversary if the writing is good, if the pace is good, if the characters are good, then I'm gonna like it. But these are just things uh, that don't really complete the puzzle for me in terms of giving it just an outstanding, oh my god, amazing. Because a lot of the things they do in the show these days is kind of give you an homage to something older uh, that a lot of people liked. And for me, it was season 3 through 4 uh, prop that David Tennant used. That's one of my favorite things about the show, um, just because I, I like to talk about the in general. Now, the TARDIS itself, I don't have too much problem with that, because honestly, as I've said in a, one of my previous videos you probably haven't seen, the David Tennant era TARDIS, the season one through five TARDIS, or season one through four TARDIS, is my least favorite of all the TARDIS. Like, and I mean of original series versus uh, new series. That's my least favorite. It's like at the bottom of the list. I hate that TARDIS. Uh, I don't like the style. I don't like the, the way that the buttons are laid out. There's no buttons. There's just like random stuff just kind of sh shoved into this. It, it really looks terrible. Um, now, uh, my favorite is the Matt Smith TARDIS. Uh, latest Matt Smith TARDIS. Not just because it's new. It's just um, the way it's styled. It, it's kind of bringing back like old stuff like I said, uh, but also kind of rushed like kind of injecting this new modern kind of style with it. Uh, so 
Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll probably have another 50th Flaws uh, video um, up in a while. Probably griping about another thing. Not, you know, not trying to make you hate the 50th anniversary, but just things that, uh, you know, you might not have noticed before. Uh, but yeah, thanks for Thanks for watching! Yeah. Thanks for watching! Hey, come on, sing. Just sing. Start singing. No. Just start. No. Thanks for watching! 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 Thanks for watching!